Hey friends, what's up? All right, so today um, I'm going to actually release Downshift 3.0. Uh, I thought you might be interested to see me uh, actually do that. So we've solved a bunch of, of bugs here. Actually, this is the direct link to the issue where I'm tracking this. Um, so we're changing how default input value works. I, I recorded a video to explain what all we're doing. Um, like, I think it was in my last dev tip. Um, but uh, yeah, so we did a bunch of stuff. Everything's working nice. Uh, we're pretty happy uh, happy with things. There are two things that are kind of messed up, and that is the rag native tests are broken and the TypeScript tests are broken. Um, but as far as the TypeScript goes, um, it's just this uh, weird thing, something to do with Cypress. I, I honestly don't even know. Um, I, I guess we're bringing in the wrong dependency because Cypress and there's a bug and they're going to release it eventually. So that that should fix it. Um, oh, hi there. Um, so yeah, that's that's the TypeScript thing. I'm not too concerned about that. And that's only the test too. So it's we're not actually breaking TypeScript. So it should still work. Um, and then for the, um, for the React Native test, I think this is also um, not all that like hugely important. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly why it's breaking. So anyway, I've got just these things to disable those and we'll re-enable those later um, when things are working. So I feel pretty confident that this thing is going to work. Um, I'm, I'm pretty positive that the reason the tests are breaking is because of dependencies that I updated that are dev dependencies. So we didn't really change anything within Downshift itself that I expect to break these things. Um, so yeah, anyway. This is me releasing Downshift 3.0. Uh, so I've got a uh, branch um, called Next, and this is how I how I do this. Often I will actually do a pre-release, but I feel pretty comfortable with this one um, that I don't, um, like there's not a ton of stuff changing here and that I don't feel like it's necessary to do a pre-release. But if I did do a pre-release, I'd do it right in here um, and I'd manually set the version here um, to 3.0.0 dash um, beta dot zero or something like that. Um, I'd save this, I'd run the build, uh, npm run build, um, and then I'd npm publish um, that and I wouldn't actually commit any of this stuff. Um, oh, oh, and when you run the publish, you have to add it's npm publish this tag beta or next. I think that's what you run. I always have to look it up. Um, sweet, somebody who's super nice, somebody who just um, paid for beer. I actually don't drink beer, but I'll, I'll buy a really good gallon of milk with that. Um, just kidding, I, I really appreciate it, thank you very much. Um, so, um, cool, so let's go ahead and release this thing. So a after I've done the pre-release and things then, uh, and gotten some feedback and people feel good about it, then I'll come into here and do this. So, this is what I do. Um, so the reason Netlify is broken, by the way, is because we I, I can change the way that things are built. Now we're instead of Storybook, we're using Docz. So that's why this is broken. So I'm not concerned about that. I'll fix it when we merge this. So I'll squash and merge. And this um, pull request has seven commits in it. And um, actually, you know what? Oh, rats. Hmm. Let me just make sure I've got so. When I uh, normally when I merge a pull request, I'll do a squash and merge because that pull request is coming from a single contributor. But this pull request has me and then one other contributor here. And if I do this squash and merge, I'm pretty sure it's going to take the author of the last commit um, because we're squashing to that commit. Um, and so then we would lose lose him in the Git history, which would be unfortunate because he helped with our accessibility. So um, what I normally do, let's cancel this. When I'm doing um, a like, normally I, I just have a single commit and then it releases and it's all automated and everything. And so it's not a big deal. Um, but when I'm doing um, breaking changes, then I want to have like several commits that go um, out together um, to for each individual feature that each individual breaking change or whatever. And so instead of a squash and merge, I'm going to um, do just a rebase and merge, which will maintain all of the commits. The problem is that I don't have access to um, a um, to be able to change the commit messages, and I'm using semantic release, and so uh, the commit messages need to be 
um, correct in order to release things properly. Now, only one of the commits needs to have the word breaking change in it for it to publish a um, breaking change here. So I'm pretty sure that this commit does have breaking change right there. So I, I can go ahead and merge this as a rebase and it will definitely uh, push a um, major version bump. Um, and then pretty much any time I do a breaking change, I'm going to want to manually edit the uh, change log anyway. So I'm not too concerned about uh, the fact that I think this one is missing uh, the breaking change, even though uh, actually, I don't, yeah, this one is a breaking change. Yeah, so it's missing breaking change in the commit. Uh, and I could go and update that commit to have the breaking change and stuff. But the only reason that I really care about the commit message is for the change log. And since I always manually change the change log for major changes anyway, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Um, and so I, I'm going to get the breaking change from this one. So I'll get a major version bump. So I'm good. So we'll do the rebase and merge. We'll get all the commits. Um, I don't know what's supposed to show up there, but uh, hopefully it's nothing important. And... Um, yeah, the reason I had to check that box was because Netlify was broken, um, but I'm fine there. So, sweet. It's been merged. Now I can delete that branch. We'll go up to downshift uh, to the repo on master. And here I've got the build. It's passing right now. Um, but let's, let's watch it happen as it releases all of this stuff. Um, yeah, and then we can go to our releases here. Get all that stuff ready. Hey, while that's happening, I can answer your questions. So we had one person who said, Hey, Kent, do you run semantic release via KCD scripts? How can I do that? Yeah, sure, I'll show you. Uh, KCD scripts. Um, here, we'll just do the find um, uh, Travis. So I've got a Travis after success script. And what this does is um, it uses deploy once. So uh, we use Travis deploy once at five. Um, and if that um, exit status is a zero, then that means we are only deploying once. So this is like the leader or whatever. I don't know how all that works. Uh, most of the time I only have one um, version of Travis running. In any case, it's, we're gonna run after su uh, success scripts. And then here we're gonna determine if we should auto release. So if the package version is my 000, zero semantically released, or and the we're on, um, Travis is false. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, right. Sorry. This is uh, parsing v Travis. That should be true. But if there's nothing there, then we'll default it to false. That's right. Um, so, and we're on Travis. And the Travis branch is master. We don't, don't want to release on the next branch or something. And we're not in a pull request. So, that if all those cases are true, then we'll auto release. And then we'll determine if we want to report coverage if there's a coverage directory and we don't have a skip code cove <coughs> um, environment variable. Okay, cool. So if we don't have either one of those, then we'll just console log. If we have either of them, then we're going to um, use concurrently to run these two scripts. So this get concurrently args just makes it, because uh, concurrently has kind of a funny CLI API and makes it kind of hard. So I, I have this get concurrently args that takes an object and generates the arguments for it. So uh, for Code Cove, if we're reporting coverage, then this is what we're going to do: installing Code Cove, and then we run Code Cove. Um, and then, um, if we're auto releasing, then we're installing Semantic Release. We install it, and then we execute um, running Semantic Release, and then we just run Semantic Release. Uh, so that's how that works, and it's it's kind of neat. Um, so let's see what what's going on now. Um, cool, yeah. So we're downloading Cypress. Let's check out any other questions. Um, I do a similar process. Semantic release now supports publishing to multiple NPM tags now. I'll probably set it up soon to avoid the manual release. Nice. Um, I don't manually release often enough to really look into uh, improving that experience. Maybe if I, if I did, then I would. But, um, but that's cool. If you figure it out, maybe we can, um, I don't know. Give each other a high five. Okay, so we're unzipping Cypress. That's taking a while. Um, come on. Does anybody else have questions? You like the KCD script, so do I. It's kind of great. It saves me a silly amount of time. Here we go. Nice, love Preact. Yeah, I love Preact. Uh, okay, 
So on Travis in Downshift, um, so KCD scripts has this validate script that allows you to run, uh, it, it by default runs like build, test, lint, and um, something else, um, all in parallel. Um, but if you want to run multiple scripts in parallel, then you can do that. Um, and so actually here I can show you in our package JSON, that's what we do. We have a validate script and it runs that, but we're running a ton of stuff. Um, like some of our tests depend on the built version. So we say build and test, build and then test. And then these are the tests that do not run, uh, rely on those things. So anyway, the uh, problem with that is Travis doesn't have enough memory to run all those in parallel. So what we do is I split it into three um, where we run validate with lint, build and test, and then test cover, and then test server-side rendering and test Cypress, and then uh, test flow coverage and test TypeScript, which we've disabled because those are broken for right now. Hopefully they'll be fixed soon. So anyway, that's what's going on right now. We're running the lint, build and test, and cover all at the same time. And um, that's going to take some time. I'm not sure why it takes so long, to be perfectly honest. It doesn't take this long locally, but like 51 seconds to test a handful of uh, utilities. I think there's maybe something wrong with um, how we're running the build at the same time. I, I really have no idea. It's, it's weird to me. Um, we got a bunch of warnings here. Probably should fix that. Um, not a really big deal though. At the end result is what I what we want. So, um, yeah, actually, maybe the build and test is pretty intense because it's running roll up for like four different outputs um, for uh, three different things. So we've got React, Preact, and React Native. Uh, we're building it, so we're building it three times, and each one gets four outputs. I think. Uh, so it's kind of kind of silly. Um, so yeah, then we're now we're running test SSR server side rendering that was pretty quick, um, and then uh, test Cypress, and that runs um, our uh, build our Doxy site build first. Actually, you know what? While this is going on, I'm gonna go to Netlify. Boy, I hope you don't see anything that I don't want you to. Yeah, nothing. You're good. <laughs> Um, I, I've just got a couple of surprises coming up soon and I don't want to, um, mess up surprises. Okay, cool. So we're going to edit the settings. Our build command is now just going to be, um, npm run, um, let's see. Huh? Yeah. How should we do this? I think that, um, so it installs for me. Yeah. I think it's just docs build and then it'll be. The publish directory is um, uh, doc z dist. There we go. Yeah. Save that. Okay, cool. Then we'll look at deploys. Um, trigger deploy. We'll just clear things up. All right, let's see. We got another question. You don't record video on purpose on Travis build for Cypress run. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, because I feel like it um, would be a waste. Ah oh, man, what? Uh, this is such a bummer. Release is not going to happen. Yeah, so the reason I don't uh, record video uh, on purpose is because I don't know where I would get it. Um, maybe there's a way to get it from Travis, but I, I don't know how, so it seems wasteful. Total bummer. Let's see if, um, if downshift, um, builds fine here. I, I like, I guess it's not going to be, uh, needing to get Cypress, so we can, um, yeah, it's probably going to be fine. So total bummer. I wonder what happened here. And that's a property JSX of undefined. What on earth would that possibly mean? This is so weird because it um, all of this worked on the pull request. Bummer. Okay, well, I'm not going to waste your time now. Um, well, well uh, what I'm going to do is I'll just wait for this to finish. And it'll say, hey, it failed. We're not going to get a release, which is a total bummer. Um, and so I'm going to just restart it and see because sometimes that, that works. Um, 
And if it doesn't, then we'll have to figure out something else to do. Um, and I'm not sure what it is. So you can keep up on the release issue. Right. Well, it's closed now because I closed it. Release 3.0.0, 591. Um, keep up on here and we'll see. Um, see what's going on. All right, any other questions? Okay, so another question, asking question because I'm having failing tests only with video recording on. That's weird, I don't know. Um, another question or comment or question. Using Cypress, what's the best way to include the tests when releasing or publishing to a branch? Run them on every push or only on builds? What I want uh, to ask is, um, what I want to ask where to find a good blog about it. I don't know about a good blog. You might ask uh, Gleb Bamatov. He seems to have a lot of stuff and he works for Cyprus. Um, for me, I want to run it as much as I possibly reasonably can. So if I can run it on every commit before I commit locally, which is exactly what I do in downshift because it's not like terribly long, then that's what I'm going to do uh, because that catches me earlier when I'm still kind of in the, in the context. But like in a real application, um, your Cypress test will probably take like quite a while. Um, and so you probably wouldn't want to um, to do that. I think that would be kind of, yeah, that'd, that'd be much. People would run with no verify like all the time. So um, if it took a while, then I, I would um, run uh, Cypress on every push or, or sorry, like um, in CI on every push. Um, or you could just run it on every build. Just know that as you get your uh, test running further and further away from uh, the time you commit the code, um, it'll take longer, like that feedback loop is longer, it takes longer to get back to you, and it's kind of annoying. Um, so here, let me just start this over again. We'll see if maybe it magically starts to work again. Um, yeah, it looks like we deployed successfully, so that's good. Review that. And, hmm. Oh, hey, there you go. Oh, sweet. I can reproduce this easily. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Uh, let's just see. I'm going to uh, come back here. We'll um, npm run doc z de or docs dev. <coughs> yeah, maybe we can figure out what's going on here without any trouble. Um, Raphael said, I had to do manual release because I couldn't set up semantic release. Does anyone know any tutorial how to set up uh, and configure semantic release with Travis? So I have kind of an out outdated one, but you might like this. Um, uh, right, OSS. Oh, um, yeah, so try that out. Um, it is a little outdated, like the actual script that you run to run semantic releases change. So you want to read um, like the docs, um, but lots of uh, lots of the stuff in there is uh, still relevant. So, okay, cool. So we're localhost 6006. Don't ask me why I chose that port. I'm not sure why I chose that port. Okay, so it's still working. My guess is maybe there is a release of um, docz that uh, caused this bug. So let's figure out what's going on here. But this is great. Uh, so I know that this is going to break. Um, so let's let's not waste any resources and trees and whatnot. Uh, nine days ago. Um, no, I added this pretty recently. So that's weird. Um, let's go ahead and we'll rmrf node modules and pack it. Well, yeah. And then we'll npm install again um, while I'm live streaming. That would be interesting. Um, Look at how long it takes to delete the node modules directory. Nuts. Um, okay, so while that is installing, we'll see if it can install faster than it can uh, delete. <laughs> um, so Radu Brayar says e.plugins is undefined. I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, you need to be more explicit. Okay, what's the status on my book? Oh, my novel? Um, so I started, in, for practice, I started writing the backstory of one of my characters. Um, and I've written like four scenes, like 
I don't know, 1300 words or no, no, 2400 words or something like that. Not a whole lot. Um, and uh, yeah, I've, I've got lots of plans. I need to outline the book a little bit more, but it's going to be great. Okay. Um, yeah, I wonder what could have could have caused that. Here, let's see if we can if we can dive into this a little bit while we're waiting for that install to take place. Come on, go on, inspect. Whoa, not that. I did not mean to press that button. What is going on? Uh, oh. Tool. oh, there we go. Just kind of going a little bit on the slow side. Okay, so we're going to refresh here. Maybe that'll speed things up. I don't know. Okay. Well, let's just check this out. What are, what are we... Where are we breaking? Uh, me. We're inside of a reduce. Bubble browser ES. I don't know what that means. React live. Okay. Okay, well, it's pretty. Oh, oh, that's what you're talking about. Oh, gotcha, Radu. Seems like an issue with tooling the JSX parser. Okay. E dot plugins. E dot plugins. I wonder what E is referring to. Let's uh, pause on exceptions. We can stop this in the context. I, I hear in Firefox you can actually stop like time travel and like go back to where errors were thrown and stuff. It's pretty, pretty wild stuff. Boy, I don't know. Oh, maybe this is what's saying so long. Here, let's hide that. Um, because apparently the um, tool that they're using to render the terminal it's like very slow so maybe that was part of the reason why it's going so slow okay pretty print also things always go slow when I'm live streaming it's just that's just the way it works Weep. come on there we go okay so E refers to this thing that looks like um, an in-browser parser could be uh, Buble. I think that's what React Live uses. Um, interesting. Plugins. It doesn't have plugins. Huh. Buble. Oh, of course. I'm going to find like Michael Buble. Um, JS parser. Okay. Whoa, it's on GitLab. Okay, so we'll go back to the project. Um, oh, it's moved. All right. So, let's see. The main is probably index here, so we can see if it has the same exports. Question from somebody. Uh, I know you're super busy, but I'm working on Treehouse Tech degree in JS and have to make a testing course, Mocha, and would love to uh, love a Jest course from you there. Um, yeah, I am not going to put anything on Treehouse, not anything against Treehouse. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. But if you want to learn testing, there's no better place, or there will be no better place than testingjavascript.com. Go check it out. I'm sure, like, Everybody who's watching this right now knows. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, all right. So Radu is saying it's related to the Acorn JSX parser, um, which, yep, there it is. Acorn JSX being used. Parser extend, plugins. Yeah, there's something busted in, in here. Let's see if there was a release of Buble. Whoa, 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 fingers off. Uh, Buble. Um, this was released two days ago. Yep, they busted something two days ago. Total bummer. All right, let's see what, uh, if somebody's open an issue about this. Um, doesn't look like they have. Yeah, four hours ago. Huh. Yeah, okay, that's a total bummer that this happened at the very moment that I was going to do a release. So, um, all right, I'm going to jump out. Um, I'll 
I need to file an issue or something. Um, and we can figure out what's going on here. But thanks for um, watching me debug and not release downshift. Uh, but it turns out it is just this little issue. We should hopefully be able to get it working. Actually, I'll, I'll just show you really quick. The first thing I'm going to do in releasing that or in checking this out. So I'm going to we'll visit the really latest release. We'll do, uh, man, I never know how to, how to do this. Um, compare um, master or no. Um, v0.19.4 dot dot dot. I actually want three. V0.19.4. I think that's the URL for it. Ta-da! These are all the commits that happened um, between the last release and the current one, which, oh my goodness, all year. Almost all year. Yikes. Okay, so there are not a ton of changes. Um, let's just see what on earth. Um... Nothing that looks super related to, um, well, this is JSX, but it doesn't need that transforms. It was just a unnecessary argument. Um, it's for statement or in statement was changed. Assignment expression was changed. Huh. Interesting. Create config. That's a roll up thing. Another roll up thing. I guess JSON thing, I guess logic thing. Uh. Uh. Yeah, boo. I am not sure what would have caused this problem. Plugin. These are all roll-up plugins, not related. Ah, I'm not sure what's going on. All right. Um, man, that stinks. Not sure what, what the problem is here, but I do know that the Doxy vo folks will help. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, we will install, here, let me just double check. Doxy dependencies, live, react live. No, it's uh, Doxy. Um, theme default, that's the one, and that has a dependency on live react live, and that has a dependency on Buble. So, um, yeah, interesting. And that was published a while ago. So, it's Buble. I wonder if I just install Buble at uh, 19.3 if that fixes things for me. So, um, we'll npm install as a dev dependency buble at 0 0.19.3 and move this over a little bit um technically it should already be in my known modules um yeah thanks radu you're being very helpful if I reverted the Doxy version, then that still wouldn't help because Doxy depends on React Live, which uh, depends on uh, Buble. So, well, Doxy, Doxy theme default, React Native or React Live, then Buble. So if I put, so right now we've got a Buble in here. If I can beat um, my install to show you, so we've got Babel, um, B U B. All right. So this is the Buble we've got, version 19.4, 0.19.4. There we go. We'll just sit here and it should update in just a sec when this finally, when this install is finished. So uh, because NPM since version four or five is all flat, maybe even three actually, uh, since it's all flat, um, we're gonna override this, this version here, hopefully. Ah, there we go. Sweet. And that should fix it. Um, so if we run the docs again. Now that we have 
uh, Buble version that is not going to be angry at me, hopefully. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that. Actually, I think that was the localhost one. I want that one. And they're using Webpack Serve, so it should show me. Oh, huh, interesting. We'll see what happens here. Uh, no. What? Okay, that's interesting. Oh, so that E variable is Acorn. Plugins, Acorns, plugins. So, oh, it's probably not Buble. Ah, we're going deeper. We're going deeper. We're going to into Acorn.js. Acorn. Well, here, let's look at dependencies here. Acorn. Either one of these will go Acorn and Acorn JSX. And this was released 13 days ago, so it's probably not that one. 16 days ago. Hmm. Well, that's a 5.0, though. This is a 6.2. Huh. Let's take a look at um, dependencies. 5. Oh, okay, so it was going from Acorn 4 to Acorn um, 6.0.2. So there's a bug in here. I, I wonder if there's... Um, yeah, because if we look in here, this is Buble Browser. It's probably... Roll, roll, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. There's some sort of incompatibility going on. Wait, did I determine it was Acorn.js? Yeah. Okay, so we'll look at the issues. Nope, still nothing. So nobody's reported this, um, which is quite unfortunate. But my guess, my hunch is that if I um, uninstall everything again and reinstall with Buble explicitly listed here, then it's going to get my correct Acorn version. Um, and yeah, but now I'm seriously going to stop because this is going on too long. Um, so I will figure this out and we'll get a release of Downshift. It's the last thing I do today, which it might be at this rate. All right, I'm going to take off. This was a super long one, so sorry about that. Um, I hope you have a nice day and we will see you next time. Peace.